Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a really cool brother by the name of Matt. Zeman, I hope I pronounced it correctly. It's Zeman, but it's close enough. Jay. Zeman, can't no see, worries, no worries. That, right? Yeah, exactly. He's a cool, calm, collected m- character. My brother Matt. Uh, so, you guys, let me give you Matt's background and his a little bit of a bio. We're going to be talking about psychedelics today, um, but he is an explorer of the inner world, advocating for responsible psychedelic use. He holds an MSc in psychology and neuroscience from King's College of London. He deeply desires to help others and guides people through psychedelic journeys, fostering purpose, connection, and true self-reclamation. Talking point, reclaim, number number one, the, our first talking point is reclaiming your true self. Before we go into that, and I know we're pressed up against it, I want to kind of get your take right now of where humanity is going. Today is August 10th and you're going to be running pretty soon because my podcast queue is way down low right now, which is awesome because I've been moving the last three months. But um, just your opinions and thoughts right now of where humanity is going. Yeah, Jamie, I'm, I'm a big believer in that this is the greatest time ever to have been alive. That sure. uh, while there's lots of challenges that need to be worked on the by all metrics, this is incredible and that we are there is a, a, a number of people who are waking up, whose consciousness is being expanded, who um, are, are seeing the interconnectedness of all things, who are yes. recognizing us as part of nature and not separate from nature. And uh, I see all sorts of good things in the future through and through through solving the challenges that we see before us today. Beautiful. Yeah, the web of light, the web of connectivity. I mean, literally nature is God or nature is the source field, right? If we can just be cognizant of it and obviously using psychedelics and plants and all the other things that are given to us by nature can really help foster and and enrich that experience and really awaken people. And like you said, people are waking up every day. It's interesting because a lot of the quote unquote newbie awakening, awakened people are now having to go through the stages of waking. (laughs) And there is some shock and awe. you know, at the beginning there's, there's anger and there's like kind of fear and, you know, there's the whole, like, I want revenge. I want justice, you know? So it's, in, it's interesting to see the stages of awakening, but, uh, your first step or your first point that we're going to talk about today. And as you said, um, we may go in different directions because obviously I'm an advanced five MEO user and I love to speak about these kind of things, but uh, re- reclaiming your true self. Can you, can you enlighten us on that? Yeah. I'm a, so I, I think this type of technology, when you talk about psychedelics or entheogens, when we yeah. talk, when we use them in a spiritual context, um, what do they, and I'm happy to talk about the brain science. I'm happy to talk about any aspect of it, but at its core, what I believe these, these, these tech, this technology does is it allows us to remember who we are, right? Exactly. To remember that we are wise, to remember that we are beautiful, to remember that we are loved and that we don't have to do anything to be deserving of those, of, of that love. And from that remembering, there becomes a confidence that then can, uh, help shape or help us under have a clearer path forward and then take those steps with uh without looking for external validation because we know that inside we are we are true and aligned beautiful man um yeah i mean i feel like people such as ourselves are speaking almost in the same way in the same vein about everything now it's kind of like you're either empowered sovereign and free personally accountable, personally responsible, or you're not, 
and you know, however you want to label that person or that those people, but really let's just call it as they're giving their power away to the external, whatever the external is. Right. Which, and again, no bad anybody. That exactly. is how we are raised in this culture. We are, we are, we are brought true. up in a scarcity mindset. There's not enough for everybody. Totally you got to take care of yourself. You got to get what's yours. <laughs> um, we, our school systems are set up. It's not, not only does just your GPA matter, but your class ranking matters. And then does, how am I incentivized to help the people next to me and on right. and on and on. And that, carries through to the competition to college, the competition for jobs, the competition for resources. And the reality is we are in an abundant world. Oh. There is plenty for everybody. There is plenty for you. There's plenty for me. And my teacher always says that I am, each of us are 100% responsible and accountable for everything in our lives. We right. make everything in our lives happen. And if we want something else to happen, we can make that happen. And if it doesn't happen, we're going to get something better because we're always going to get what we truly want or need if we work in that direction. Yeah. I mean, we're here as souls to, to evolve and grow, right? We inhabit these conscious physical avatar bodies to truly evolve and grow our soul. And every experience that we feel, you know, react to, choose to respond to is an opportunity for growth. But we have to look at it from that perspective, right? Again, a place of neutral observation. Hmm, I maybe want less of this. I want more of that. How do I learn from both of those experiences again, and then not label them as quote unquote negative or positive, but just as an opportunity for, for learning. And, you know, once we really can see things, that's truly seeing the forest through the trees, life becomes much easier because now you're not in resistance to really anything. You know, I like to say first it's acceptance, then it's allowance. Yeah. And you're not, not only you're not in resistance when you realize that it's impossible to fail. Right. We only move in one direction, which That's is right. forward. It's we are always learning, healing, and growing, moving forward. So we might not achieve a task or we might not get something that we thought we wanted. Um, but that's not the same as failure. It's just yeah. another learning, healing, growing opportunity as we move forward until we die. And at which point, again, the school I come from is that's we just move out of the human shape that's into right. a different form. Right. But when failure is removed from our vocabulary, and 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 also not only is failure removed, should I should do? Cool. I am responsible for. I no, there is no. It's all. There's no one telling you what to do besides right. yourself with yeah. this power. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I like to say death is nothing more than a change of focus. That's right? beautiful. I like that. Yeah. And that's what it is. I mean, it literally is. Um, again, when you get to that conscious frequency of awareness, to get, and we're all walking the path to get to that level of awareness, and not everybody is there. But as I always say, as you said, you just said it even better, you know, there's no mistakes, there's no backwards, it's only forwards. And because we're all walking the same path at different rates and speed, no rate of speed is better than another. Right. So you and can't, we're all connected to it. And there's no, yeah, there's no judgment. There's no, we're no all spiritual peers on the same path. And until all of us are awake and have this, none of us, it, it, we can have different forms, but right. it's all, it's all connected. Yeah. It's interesting though, because we are all on the same path and we are all interconnected, but journeying through the third dimension is sometimes and I don't like to call it difficult, but an interesting experience because obviously you are navigating and interweaving through people of different levels of conscious awareness. And sometimes they, as a part of your journey or as part of your evolution and growth, can make things difficult slash contrastful. And, and as you know, that's the greatest opportunity if you look at it as that. Without a doubt. And, and, and keeping keeping – us safe as we navigate through that 3D or that third plane is uh, is super important. So knowing who, again, we're talking we're talking about large dose psychedelics. Having sure. male and females in the room to balance the energy, I think, is hugely important. Having extra sets of eyes to to make sure you're safe when you're in a non ordinary state of consciousness is is hugely important. Um, may, knowing uh, about how long and what this experience might do before you go into it is important so that you have the right mindset, you're in the right setting, and all of that can lead to profound connection and, uh, and, and growth and optimization and all of those things. Do you have a preferred psychedelic? Oh, I, 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 I like different psychedelics for different things. I will tell you what, um, what, uh, what, um, 
I use a lot in the spiritual ceremonies that I'm involved with. And again, just to be, I'm not, I'm not a medicine person. I, I help create containers and, 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 and safe spaces for people to journey, but I bring in people who have done led thousands and thousands of people's on, uh, on experiences. This is not, nice. um, I don't pretend to be a medicine person, but, uh, sure. I like kind of an arc to an, to a, to a multi-day retreat. So I, I like when people start, with uh, sassafras or MDA or even MDMA if they don't have MDA. So some type of heart opener where they feel a lot of love for themselves, they feel a lot of love for others. They kind of practice, if they're new, they're practicing ceremony. If they're experienced, it's reminding them of what ceremony is. What does it feel like to have these other people in the room? What does it feel like to have these facilitators and these musicians and these smells and these sounds? And Mm -hmm. it's a great way to start. I then like people moving into psilocybin, uh, magic mushrooms, where they can, especially if it's the very next day, um, I believe people then can go deeper, they can surrender more, they can feel the interconnectedness of all things, they can feel the earth breathe. Um, they're, They're more open because of the day before with MDA. And then I love for people who've now done those two medicines, if, if they are willing and, uh, and want the five MEO experience, I think that's a beautiful way to cap off that arc where then they have a non-duality experience. They get to melt into the universe. They get to have a personal conversation with their higher power. Right. Um, there is no question of, a of, a, of an ego death. Um, and they have that experience. And then I, we tend to wrap everything up with a non-psychedelic the next day uh, using like a hape ceremony, some type of candlelight meditation, some type of sharing circle. But I think that that is a progression is, is a lovely progression um, for many people who are coming at it for a ceremonial approach. Now people coming at it from a medical might choose ketamine first because it's legal. They might choose psilocybin because they're involved in a study. There's lots of other ways for people to meet the medicine. I'm talking about my personal preference when it comes to ceremony. I like that arc I just described. And then, and, and sorry, one more thing I also love. I think multi-day ayahuasca ceremonies are beautiful for those who want to experience that. It's just a harder entry point for a lot of people. That's all I was just going to say, dude, you and me are on the same conscious frequency. It's insane. I'm like going to get your number before you leave me. Cause I, don't <laughs> wanna, I mean, I have a lot of people in the Jay Campbell inner circle that they want to do this now, you know, they've exploded in their conscious awareness in the last two years. And they're always asking me about somebody that can create the set and setting and foster this. So the universe connected you and me there today, we go. Man, for an yeah, amazing We've got reason. things to talk about. Oh my God, dude. But, uh, <laughs> well, so the, so the, so the, um, the sassafras, so I'm a huge MDMA, MDA yep. guy. I mean, you know, very clinical, precise doses. I want to ask you, like, is there a, you know, milligram limit that you would consider, for somebody, you know, uh, in that first night of using MDMA or sassafras or whatever, I mean, is it like, you know, I, I mean, I, in my, in my science background, the science guy, you know, it's like 80 milligrams, bro, or 120 milligrams is kind of the upper limit, you know, but I mean, is there, is, I mean, is there an amount? I think that, I mean, I think what our facilitators would tell you is we start most people at around a hundred yeah. and then we offer a booster about 45 minutes in. Um, for those who are not feeling as much as they would like to feel or feel like they need to feel more. Um, but it is such a, what I love about that medicine, I love it for individual work, um, an individual connection. And then I also love it for couples, for couples who are not experienced. I mean, this is a, putting that into your quarterly or biannually, um, relationship wheelhouse toolbox is just lovely to be able to say to your spouse, without shame, blame, or guilt. When you do blank, I feel blank. And then that person just to listen and then respond, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I did not know that that's what I was doing. Yeah. And then truly to hear each other. It's just a beautiful medicine for couple work and it's a beautiful medicine for personal work and group ceremony work. It's, it's, uh, it's incredible. And then again, for those listening and not familiar, this is the same medicine that we Jay and I are talking about right now. That's being used for treatment resistant post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. So picture mm-hmm. veterans, first responders, victims yeah. of sexual assault who nothing has worked, no talk therapy, no existing pharmacological solution, phase three clinical trials, Three sessions with MDMA, therapy before and after, 67% no longer qualify as having PTSD. 88% have a clinically significant improvement in symptoms. It is an incredible medicine, and it will be re-legalized here in the States. Uh, it looks like early next year. 
Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Amazing stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll never share this with anybody other than like my wife, but you're the guy. Uh, the last three or four times, and I have obviously a, a, a provider of very high quality mm-hmm. pharma- pharmaceutical sassafras, and I have literally made it a conscious effort, but choice to say that I was going to stay at 540, you know, on the field my entire trip experience, whatever. And that I would, as soon as I started feeling fractals or just, you know, the energy and frequency of like, quote unquote, rolling, you know, however you want to call it, that I would stay in that field and no one in the set and setting that I was at, wherever it would be, could interrupt that. And I'm, dude, when I put my mind into that desire, I mean, I, I tripled, if not quadrupled the feelings of love of like, and you have it, as you know, because obviously, as you said, pharmace- pharmaceutically, biodynamically, it's moving you to that energy field anyway. But like when you say, okay, I'm going to place my consciousness here now too, and, I, and nothing is going to take me out of it. Wow. I mean, I, I had the, some of the best experiences of my entire life. In fact, last year, I, I, I remember where I was, I won't give it away, but mm. man, I had such a profound experience and I was literally in tears, dude like with my friends and they were looking at me like some of them were laughing, like what the hell's the matter with Jay? And I was just, I mean, I was in the, I was in the zone. I mean, and and as you know, and you know, when you're in the source field under the influence of five EMO and an amazing trip, hopefully everybody experiences that. I know some do not because they're in fear, but um, man, I, dude, I just cry. I mean, my heart space explodes and I literally cathartically cry. I mean, the very first time that I did it, Matt, it was, in 2010, actually it was 2011, early 2011. And I was in a very low place in my life from what had happened to me, divorce and everything else, kids being taken from me and stuff. And I, I think i I felt like I left out multiple generations of trauma, um, you know, transpersonal, transgenerational, because like when I came to the, the, the medicine man, call him the shaman, whatever you want to call it, you know, it was like, he was like the entire room. There was 13 people in the space were crying. Now, was like, this MDMA or was this 5-MeO? Did we no, switch? this is 5-MeO. This okay, is 5-MeO. so we, this we is jumped over to 5-MeO. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I apologize. But the first time I did 5-MeO, which was back in 2011, I was in a really low space in my life, and I had no idea what to expect uh, other than what I had read. But it was the most cathartic experience of my life. And honestly, since then, I can literally chart my ascension as a human being, as a spiritually aware mm. being from that first experience. I mean, everything changed, but like I said, I mean, I really feel like I consciously, it was like peeling the onion and I, and I, I let out so much that like the whole room was moved people that didn't know me. Um, but like I said, I mean, from that moment, like my life consciously expanded at, you know, literally a geometric rate. I mean, it, it, it would be impossible to quantify. And that really was the seminal moment for me. There was one other quote unquote dark night of the soul, but I know it came from that exposure, which was literally like three months later. And then since then, it's just been one amazing experience after the other. You just covered so much ground, Jay. It's, it's incredible. I think we could spend an hour just talking about your last five minutes. I mean, it's uh, amazing. <laughs> well, I'm bringing you back for sure. So you got about uh, 33 minutes before I got to let you go. But let's, let's talk about this here. I want to jump on so many things. Let's, let's what, things that resonated. I mean, you, you're talking about uh, tears, crying, and love, which as a, as a strong male, that's not our normal language. It's right. not what, we're, what you're what we're taught in school, boys don't cry, all those things. And I love, I love that you're normalizing this conversation. I love that you're reminding your listeners and reminding me and reminding yourself that we've evolved over millions of years with tear ducts for a reason. We have emotions, our, um, our, our body's ability, our body telling us it's, it's our, it's our ability to feel a thought before we understand the thought. And there are times when we need to release and, and we so often in our culture hold our emotions in as men and to be able to let them go and to have a safe space to do that and to have that setting where you are comfortable releasing 
is so important. And we talk about in our, and again, in ceremony all the time, there's no wrong way or right way to do a ceremony. If you need to cry, you should cry. If you need to laugh, you should laugh. If you want to be silent in your space, be silent in your space. But there's no judgment. This is what this is for. Right. Um, and we all have different reasons of coming to ceremony. Um, and yeah, what, what an amazing, what an amazing place to do that. Uh, you then, you talked about, um, which is actually interesting, Jay, I, I kind of want to, want to nip, nip at this a little bit. The, the, f- we've talked, I mean, again, I don't know you very well. We just had a little bit of conversation. No, I was a little surprised that you, you, uh, I, okay, I, there we go. You I, definitely I, do know me. <laughs> but I was a little surprised you learned, you used language about things being taken away from you or things happening to you versus, uh, the manifesting of I manifested my children leaving or I manifested this divorce happening, um, which I would have more of expected from you. So I'm not, and again, not, no judgment, no wrong. I'm just curious about that. Is it, was that intentional? Was that a slip? Was that mostly just, I mean, mostly a slip, but I'm also speaking from where I was then. Ah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. And it does sound like a, like a very dark period, a lot of emotion. Um, but I, and again, I think for your, I love listening to you talk about that because it's, that's, the, is it define who you are before or after that defines what you were experiencing at that moment in time. Yeah. And I was uh, clearly, Matt, I was living from a place of ego at that point in time in my life. And all of those experiences, oh, absolutely. All of those experiences um, made me or helped shape me into the person that I'm growing into now. And so, yeah. So when I speak about it in the way that I did, it's coming from like, that's Mm. who I was then versus who I am now. And so, yeah, you can kind of just like chameleon. I was almost a chameleon in speaking that to you. And it's funny that you picked up on that because I didn't even think of that because I don't really speak like that from a conscious word languaging standpoint now, but placing myself in that memory and in that feeling, that's what came out. Amazing. So it's kind of that's like natural to come out like that. Yeah. Uh, wild. Do, <laughs> do your listeners know what you're talking When we talk about 5-MeO-DMT, should we back up just a touch and fill them in on what that is? I would love for you to speak about it, but most of them do. I mean, most okay. of the people, I mean, I really, I'm very blessed and grateful that I attract people that understand what we're talking about, but there's no question that there's newbies and people that are just, you know, coming in. So yeah, why don't you define what 5-MeO is? So super quickly, 5-MeO-DMT is also referred to as bufo or bufo alvarius. It's the, it's the venom of the bufo alvarius toad that um, comes out of the Sonoran Desert. Um, That's right. So that, and you can either consume this in a natural, like truly from the actual venom, it's, 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 it's shot onto a glass, it's then dried out, it's then inhaled, or they actually make a synthetic 5-MeO-DMT uh, that you can, you can experience as well. In the world of psychedelics, this is as potent of a psychedelic as we know that exists. Um, and it typically takes people on a 10 to 20 minute um, experience that um, that many people say they their lives are forever changed. And that's what Jay would say. That's what I would say. Um, the uh, Again, so many things that Jay said resonated with me when you talk about that, that feeling of love and safety. Um, I feel like you can get there on psilocybin. I know you can get there because I got there on psilocybin. But when you, when many people take Bufo or 5-MeO-DMT, it's a, um, it's such a higher level. It's it's an emotional range right. that I didn't know existed. Yeah. Um, if I, if I could share with you right yeah, now, I'll give do. you more. I call it a blast to the mothership. Why would you do anything else when you knew you could get to the mothership and be in the source field literally like that, right? Now, I'm not downgrading any of the other things because I've done all the other things too. Now, by the way, just again, for your knowing, knowing, um, I have not done ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly because I was like, nothing can beat this. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's like, I mean, I know what happens. And by the way, just so you know, also too, every single time I've done it, it's just been crying. It's been holding my hand on my heart saying i'm grateful i mean i I mean like you said it's just pure unconditional 500 love i would say it's actually a couple of my experiences it was a thousand it was ineffable it was like and and you actually feel the energy coming out of your hands as if it's like remember that when you were kids we used to go those like science things you put your hand on the balls and the lightning would come out Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it feels like that that you are radiating love out of your out of your fingers and if you put on your heart you feel the love go into your body or into your chest like as, as jay was talking about now this is so unreal and so synchronistic 
yesterday somebody tagged me on Twitter about 5MEO out of the blue, and I literally wrote, I am going to read this to you right now. I am not kidding you. This is incredible. I, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm, my head is exploding, and I'm like, how is this even possible? But this is literally that came out of me yesterday. I'm going into my notifications to find this. Um, this guy tagged me and said, um, 5 meo dmt that was literally some guy named updo wazoo who knows that's his little <laughs> handle and i literally said this matt i'll show you this i can share this on the screen right now i said this is a great point i could hire one of the world's finest shamans and administer sacred ceremonies of 5 meo dmt to 25 percent of the world's population and completely collapse the matrix within two weeks this just triggered a great idea in me and now you just came to me this is the universe bro I'm not kidding you. I literally wrote that yesterday. Let me share so you could see this. So I'm not BSing you. I'm not kidding you. This is oh, insane. I mean, I'm going to share, I want to share this so everybody can see this and think I'm not crazy. <laughs> but like, look at that. So that was yesterday at 5 40 PM on August 9th. Amazing. Now, you literally come into my life today. You think this isn't like resonance? Like dude, this you is and the I way have, this works, Jay. This you, is you how and this, I have this mycelium things. network continues. We have big things to do, my friend, because like, wow. And I <laughs> honestly, I had no idea that you were on my podcast schedule today. I did know who you were because I do, you know, choose and vet everybody that comes on the podcast, but I had no idea. And so I'm like, I, I forgot <laughs> I even posted that. <laughs> and then you said what you just said. And I was like, Oh my God. I mean, I was like about to drop my glasses. I was like, did I really do that yesterday? And just so you know, cr crazy enough, yesterday, my wife and I flew at four o'clock in the morning to Columbus, Ohio to meet with a medical group to talk about something that we're going to be doing from a business standpoint. And then got up this morning mm. at the same time and flew back. So it's been just a whirlwind. And I'm the last guy I barely made his podcast. It was 10 minutes late. I was three minutes late for you. But I mean, it's just like, this is, insane. I mean, bro, I'm, my, my mind is like blown right now. Well, and this actually brings us back to your very first question. What's in store for the world. And I believe that this is. conversation we're not having, we're having is not an accident. I believe that the medicalization, the decriminalization and the religious freedom all happening in in parallel is beautiful yes. for consciousness um it is it as is. wacky as our government is this might be the best supreme court ever for religious freedom defense for mm -hmm. uh for entheogenic churches i wanted to say to you that it just triggered me again this is amazing that if a person does 5 meo dmt mm -hmm. They automatically know what quote unquote God is or source is or universal consciousness or whatever you want to call it, right? Like the highest level of creation force. It's like, you know, and, 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 and I don't want to come off as egoic in saying that. I, I really want people to understand that it's that profound of a life changing, loving, like you said, like just pure essence. I don't really know how else to describe it, but that to me gave me my point of reference when I started to understand what God, AKA creation force, life force energy, you know, there's so many different names for it, depending on the culture, depending on the religion, depending on your entrainment, but that's what God is. And so once you understand that God is not, you know, the quote unquote materialistic, religious, judging, damning, sitting on a chalice with a white robe and all the brainwash that, especially in the Abrahamic teachings, but it's also in the Eastern teachings, it's everywhere. Like when you can disassociate from that and you can truly understand what God source consciousness is, everything changes for you. Well, you talked uh, earlier about giving up your agency and, um, and again, no bad anybody. We That's are right. brought up in a culture where we, we, we give up our agency first to our parents, of course, right. and then to, I mean, doctors are kind of the high priests of our society. We, um, we talk about uh, – we give up even agency in the church setting. So we've, we've, people are leaving churches in droves um, because, in my opinion, they, they don't want just a set of behaviors right. and moral preaching. They don't want to be told what they can, can or can't do with their bodies. There's lots of reasons for leaving the church. What's interesting for, for me about these entheogens, these psychedelic medicines, is this allows everyone to have a direct religious experience. And I don't know about you, Jay, but I never thought that a direct religious experience was possible for me. That was, those are mystics and prophets and, 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 and people out there. Those are others. Those aren't, that's right. not me. I'm sorry. Right. I can read the book. I can send the pew, but the direct religious experience was not for me. And I just didn't know how wrong I was. Yes. Yes. This is amazing, bro. I mean, my mom died four months ago. 
God rest her soul. She was in suffering. She was in fear, Catholic, you know, the whole moral, righteous guilt nonsense. I mean, it's just, I put so much energy around her in the last couple of years of her life. And I, I truly believe right now that she's still a little bit stuck, unfortunately, right now. But um, I feel like she'll clear at some point. But um, it's insane what – and again, for me, because of my upbringing, and I'm sure probably you too, you know, Abrahamic religious teachings, it, 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 the entrainment that people have to escape. And again, as you said earlier, it's multi-generational, bro. It goes back thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, because we don't even know. Time is made up, right? Like we don't have a clue what is really going on. Everything, we're, we're clearly a species with amnesia. And then maybe and maybe that's obviously purposeful. You know, obviously the veil of forgetfulness, we do choose. But it's it's it's, it's just, it's it's fascinating to see. Like you can, you and I right now can go into a, you know, and again, this isn't a condemnation or judgment statement. It's just a what is. It's an observational. You know, any religious place, you know, church, church synagogue, uh, temple, Catholic, you know, Christian service, and like, dude, to me, I, I, I mean, from where I'm going, and again, not judgmental. It's like watching a cult. It, it's literally like watching people do things that they don't realize that they're actually doing. I mean, it's mind blowing. And again, I, I come from a place of Catholicism, right? Like I had first confession and all the things and, you know, communion and all that stuff. And I watch these people now who are adults who are still doing this without even the thought process of clarity behind like, why am I doing this? What, what, what is this? And so like when I went into the church with my mom for her funeral and my wife, I'm very blessed. My wife is exactly like us, extreme, le same level. And both of us were just like looking at things like this is incredible. Like what is really happening here? And so it's interesting to see that as many people that are walking away from it, as you said, and waking up and realizing like, you know, it's quote unquote, not the way, um, there's still a lot of people who are just entrained so much that they're just going through the motions. Yeah, Jay. And I, I, I do think, I do think, uh, what's interesting about it, about again, entheogenic medicine, psychedelic ceremonies is for those who don't have a spiritual background and, uh, you can, you can get one and have a path moving forward for those who do feel like I am a Christian and I want to be a stronger Christian. It's an incredible medicine. Uh, and right. I just picked that and picked that you can sure. do it for Buddhism. You can do it for Judaism, <laughs> right. you can do it for Islam, pick your, pick your team. Um, <laughs> it's a way to connect in a deeper level. And I've seen people have beautiful experiences that tie back to their traditions um, through this medicine. Um, and then and actually just one quick side note, it's been interesting. The um, the members of the BIPOC or, or uh, Black people have come to to different churches or different ceremonies I've been involved with. It's been super interesting to uh, to hear about their experience and their type of church growing up and kind of catching the spirit and what that felt like when they were in a frenzied state, um, and how they can compare that to what it feels like in some cases to be on a psychedelic. And I would actually say that that's very similar to the state you can get into through holotropic breath work. Right. Um, which is again, right. amazing, uh, mm -hmm. just using breath to get into a non-ordinary state of consciousness. For me, that was a big understanding of, Oh, that's what's happening in some yeah. of these revival tents and some of these, uh, um, uh, African-American churches. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. That's exactly what's happening. And I actually was in a ceremony with 5-MEO where I watched a person have that kundalini body mm -hmm. gyration. And, and by the way, that is intense stuff. I sure. mean, like the physical avatar body is put through insane energy transfer in those things. You know, because these people are basically literally, as you know, like energetically, like the spine is moving in all different directions. <laughs> you know, and when you're observing, obviously, and holding space for someone who's going through that, I mean, it's intense. I mean, yeah. to say to say the least, it's pretty intense. In the ceremonies that, uh, again, most of the ceremonies that I participate in, when there is a five meo aspect, everybody holds space for everybody yeah. else, and yeah. you sit there and you um, you are there, and your presence and your intention and your attention is a hundred percent focused and projecting love to that person as they're going through their experience. What I think is interesting of I, I've, I've certainly experienced five meo in a in a 
in a one-off setting. I've experienced 5-MeO in conjunction with DMT and followed by 5-MeO. And then I've experienced it in that setting I was just telling you about where there's kind of three sure. things. Um, what I found interesting about the ARC experience in 5-MeO is more often than not, people are sitting Buddha. So there's three ways, uh, right. again, for your listeners, that people uh, experience, the physically experience 5-MeO. Sitting Buddha is where they are just in bliss and Pure laying bliss. down and they're still and it's just beautiful. And then there's yeah. the the kundalini release or the energetic shaker mover where they are moving Crazy. around. Um, and, that, and then the third is a primal screamer where they're actually making noise. That's exactly in the right. ARC experience... 99% are sitting Buddhas. And every now and again, you have um, someone who's a streamer, someone who's a mover. In the one-off experience, it's it's more, it's still primarily sitting Buddhas, but you get more, in my experience, of the others. Um, and I wonder if that's just because they've surrendered twice before coming into that, uh, that third experience. I, I don't know what causes it, but it's certainly... Um, and all three are beautiful just for the – again, I just want to be clear. There is no judgment about how yeah. anyone receives it. It's all beautiful. I've never had anyone come out of a 5-MEO ceremony and say, oh, I wish I did not do that or that was not a uh, good experience. I've also uh, – the, the, the inside joke is you might go in as an atheist, but you're not coming out as an atheist. Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean, I, I, and again, this is just my opinion. And again, same thing, no condemnation, judgment. I kind of feel that the people that are the like freaking out screaming – May and again, it's my opinion, but may have an entity attachment, and it's helping them for sure, right? Because the entity is like, "Oh no, you're not going to do this to me," or whatever. And the five meo is saying, "Oh, you, you're, we got you." Because I mean, I've seen some weird stuff, and like, <laughs> I, I mean, like, you know, again, no judgment, no condemnation, held space for that person, but it was literally like, I mean, I know one of the people from my personal life after and if they had an entity attachment it would make sense because of the way they live their life um you know and again we're all portals right i mean we, what we our conscious choices that we make during the day and during the night you know allow us to be quote unquote conscious portals so if you make mistakes and again no judgment but i mean you know you're drinking tons of alcohol or doing lots of illicit hard drugs i mean you're a portal and it can be things you know not of the kindest of the light, let's just say, you know, can come in and out of you and stuff like that. So again, that's just kind of my opinion that when you do see something like that, it may be that, and that person is experiencing, you know, a, a come to, I mean, let's just call it a come to Yeshua moment, you know, under the influence of that, where it's like, that's what's happening. They're reacting like, I don't want this to be the way anymore. Again, it's just my opinion. I, I love this conversation. I love the, um, one that you have a listener base that understands what you're talking about when you said there might be an entity agenda or sorry, an entity attached. Um, and it could be a past life experience, it could be all sorts Absolutely. of things. This is actually why I believe that um, that it's so important that psychedelic or entheogenic use is viewed as a religious freedom uh, right sure. as much as it is a medical, and that we get conversation between the spiritual and the, uh, and the medical in the old days, way back when there was no separation between priest and doctor, right? As Western right. medicine has built, we, we've, we've had clear lines of delineation with, with doctors taking and psychiatrists saying we are pure science and typically don't have a religious affiliation. And then, and, and if we were to say that psychedelics sure were science. the domain of the spiritual, uh, well, it would be fair to say, well, they don't have enough un understanding of what to keep us safe. Conversely, if we were to say psychedelics belong in the medical, we, it would be fair to say that they don't have enough understanding of how to work in this plane and how to think about uh, a long lifespan longer than the human body and, and what are entities and, and uh, past lives and all of those things. So some way how we need a reconciliation between these two groups. We need an understanding that there can be medical intakes and looking at existing known contraindications and challenges with taking psychedelics. We can do informed consents to help create a better mindset going in um, and to keep people safe and to establish the rules. And we can do uh, preparation and integration. But, but, but for, from the spiritual side and med medically, they can work in groups and they can um, use different types of techniques that are not traditional medicine, medical techniques. And this is, uh, I think, hugely important as we move forward with this, with the psychedelic movement. I got to get your book. I was just cyber stalking you. <laughs> um, I don't I go into this type of deed. Uh, th this is actually, it's actually interesting on the book. I made such a point not to do this. I went, 
uh, at that point, I was trying to put together content that was not too technical, not too opinionated, and not too woo-woo because I really wanted to have a platform where I can talk about this is what the research says. These are how these different molecules work. These are things to keep in mind as you're doing this. Um, but as I've been going down this path now um, in these types of conversations, Jay, I, I've felt this tremendous freedom to be able to talk about these these things and, and, uh, and really... Um, I hope serve as some type of bridge between the medical and the spiritual um, in helping each other understand that there's no competition. Nobody's trying to take anything away from anybody. Mm -hmm. There's plenty for everyone. Medical, you can do things better. Spiritual, you can do things better. It all, every, it's an and. It's all yeah. just a big and. I love that. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, you're in the right place for this because, I mean, people in my side of the world, in my quote-unquote internet expertise, people ask me, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an online gypsy. <laughs> that's what I tell people. I'm like, I'm a real enemy of my accountant. He's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. I got a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's crazy, bro. Cause like, I mean, I, this, I mean, like I said, man, I'm, I'll say it again. The universe put you and me together. Cause I'm in, like, my head is like going like a million miles an hour right now. Like all the different things. I can feel but, it. Yeah. I mean, I just, I can't believe I posted that. I have not said anything about 5-MEO in probably seven or eight months. I mean, in the entire time that we were living in Mexico, we never even once thought about doing a ceremony. When we did our last ceremony, the last ceremony we did was in 2021 in November in Mexico on the beach. It was the last time we did it. And, you know, last year there was just abundance, a lot of stuff going on with my business. And then, you know, like I said, we sent our daughters to Florida and then her, my wife and I were like, let's go to Mexico. Let's cash out. Uh, and then I talked to you today and lo and behold, I wrote about what I wrote yesterday. And like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say you as a shaman because you're not a medicine man, but you're a facilitator and you're connected. And so for that to happen, it's just, again, in the university, the universe uniting us and for whatever is to come, definitely positive, definitely abundance. Let me just before I, cause I know you got to go and we, you know, we'll get a couple more minutes, but like, man, don't you address myths and rumors to the negative about psychedelics? Yeah, Jay, I think anyone born kind of 1972 to last year, we've we lived our entire life in a prohibition that no one told us was happening. We talked right. the only to prohibition we ever heard about was alcohol. Right. Um, what we what was put into our heads over and over is the frying pan and the egg, and this is drugs, and this is your brain. It's gonna fry right. them and you're gonna get addicted and it's gonna all oh, bad. There's no medicinal use. Same. So we have 50 years of that. Um so that's a lot to combat when you're trying to get the truth out. Yeah. Um, and there are um, incentives for organizations to not get this type of medicine out. Um, so as, as an example, there, there's an industry where you take a medicine every day and, uh, and have awful side effects. And it might only work in 40-ish percent of the population and never meant to be something that you stayed on for years or decades and yet people do a Wait. medicine that you take maybe as, 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 as once in your life or once a year, or even once a quarter, right. It's a very different experience with, um, with less side effects. We and call that, by the way, what you were just mentioning, we call that the Rockefeller petroleum distillate. All right. I like that. Yes. So that industry is not thrilled with, with what is happening. There are, um, there are lots of there and there are lots of myths about so so again we talk about safety and i and i always say look every drug has risks there's a risk there's there's people who die from aspirin and tylenol there's a risk for everything but we when we talk about uh psychedelics we really should be talking in terms of relative risk right so when we think about uh there's a, again i talk a lot about dr david nutt's study from imperial college of london where he said let's forget how drugs are classified and just look at the harm to self and harm to others that these drugs do right. the far left hand side is alcohol it's a 73 you work your way down um heroin's like a 55 crack cocaine's a 54 you keep working all the way down the chart the last drug he classifies as mushrooms. It's a six. LSD is a seven. MDMA is a nine. Are there risks associated with them? Absolutely. The difference between a, 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 a medicine and a, a poison can be dose, can be all sorts of things. It's not meant for literally everybody to take, but they're good for society and the risks are, are relatively 
reduced with these types of drugs versus the ones we are putting in our bodies. We are we already know there's 100,000 drug overdoses every year. We already know 70,000 of those are from fentanyl. Why we allow an underground drug uh, economy to, to f- foster f- or flourish in this country is beyond me with that Same. many deaths. It's, it's, uh, we know that people have debilitating depression and anxiety and that the existing pharmacological solutions don't work. Why we are not encouraging them to try psilocybin and MDMA I, is beyond me. We know people are addicted to heroin and opioids. Why we're not encouraging them to use Ibogaine to try to move out of that, again, beyond me. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot to unpack that we just said. Um, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back, and we're going to do another like a much deeper dive. You and I will talk in advance, and we'll like connect uh, on some discussion points that we can go really, really deep down the rabbit hole. And honestly, bro, what you and I probably should do is do a live stream and advertise it like a week in advance, and just bring a ton of people into this and Let's absolutely explode it. Um, just a couple final thoughts, and then I'll let you promote your stuff. Um, where is psychedelics going? I mean, we, you and I both think that it's going to be, like you said, the psychedelic spiritual revival. Uh, it's happening now. But do you see this becoming mainstream or, or is there just two parallel divergent realities where the empowered, sovereign, and free are in their reality and those that are not there yet? Again, no judgment, no condemnation are in their reality. Let's call that the metaverse. Yeah, is, that, is, that, is that where this goes? It's getting mainstream. I, mean, I just came yeah. back in June. There was the uh, Psychedelic Science Conference in, in Denver. There was over 12, there were over 12,000 people at this wow. conference. Massive awesome, trade yeah. show floor. Um, different tracks. There was a religious track. There was an academic track. There was a business track. Um, it was like any other conference you would go to, except it was filled with an energy that you could feel. And, and not Palpable. saying that everybody has perfect intentions and not saying that everyone is executing perfectly, Yeah. but there are paths for this, uh, Dr. Or, sorry, David Bronner, um, from Dr. Bronner's soap sure. talked about the uni- universal field. And again, that's, awesome. that's the equivalent of my medicinal, yeah. uh, decrim and, uh, religious all working together. Um, you could feel it in Colorado where the voters have stepped up to create a, a legalized medis- medical industry and decriminalizing a bunch. You can feel it in Oregon. Massachusetts is having a similar discussion right now. We have cities, Washington, D.C., Ann Arbor, Detroit, bunches of uh, those in California. It's happening. And then we're seeing it in the media. We're seeing 60 Minutes and uh, PBS and NPR and talking about this over and over. People need a choice, Jay. It's, they, they need a choice. They need something else. And there hasn't been... A, a, a option when it comes to mental health in 50 years. And this pathway for spiritual connection has been largely driven underground um, and it's coming back up. Yeah. I'm going to just real quick share um, your actual book because I think it's pretty profound, which I have not read. I very honestly have not read this and I don't really am not a psychedelic book user because of, you know, I'm the experiential guy, but I'm definitely because of you, my bro, I'm going to get this book. In fact, I already ordered it. It's on its way. Thank you for that. Yeah, this is no, of uh, psychedelics for everyone. Anywhere books are sold. I like the audio uh, audio version just because I, I read the parts I, I wrote. I have say, women I read the parts. Voice read it. I had no idea, but I was like, you read your own book, but I, I read mine too. I mean, you know, all my people are like, oh, no, 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 don't hire somebody to read. I want to listen to you speak, you know, because I yeah, mean, who can speak it better into existence than the people that create it? Absolutely. And then I also have a journal now called Beyond the Trip, which is a preparation and uh, integration journal that a bunch of different uh, retreats use as a uh, as a way to prepare their their attendees and for them to have homework for four weeks and then gratitude journaling for 30 days, which is, uh, again, just a great practice as, as you're working through this. But Jay, we have so much we can talk about. I, I definitely, I love the live stream idea. I'd love the uh, coming back on. 100%. Um, it's a treat to be able to talk to somebody who is this knowledgeable and deep into the, these topics. It's from, uh, for, from standing on the shoulders of giants and, and it takes one to know one. Um, all I can say is, man, I got amazing love in my heart now for you and to be able to, for, for who you are and what your story you're sharing and obviously your purpose that you're getting into the world. And I mean, you're helping so many people and I know that I'm doing the same thing and it was the universe aligning us up here today. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you off air for one second, but for, for guys and gals that watch this amazing podcast here today, always, as always, please support the amazing people like Matt, go to his website. It's obviously Matt Zeman, 
Dot-com, purchase his book, Psychedelics for Everyone, which absolutely looks profound. Give him a follow on IG. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.